We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? I'm doing all right. Um, I, 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 this is the part where I normally just make up a quick witty thing to say at the top, but I, I, I had nothing. I was about to say something fun or oh, this is just where I just complain about something. Um, and, and here's the thing. I never plan it. I just always have something to complain about because I just love to complain. It's one of my favorite things to do. We all um, know. But I, I just had nothing. Am I in a good mood? No. Jared, <laughs> no, I am are you not. drunk? <laughs> I wish. I did just break my mic, though. Kyle, uh, what the hell are we talking about today? Um, a lot of a lot of information. Um, it's that time of the year. We are almost the end of July. Football camp is right around the corner here. What are we? We are as this episode is being released. Eleven days. Eleven days until fall camp starts. Eleven or ten days, somewhere around there. So, what, what better? About that. What better now than later to talk about um, some over unders? Better now than later. Talk about some over unders. Talk about projections for the Big Ten and other teams here. So I think I think that's what we'll cover for today. Yes, Wasteland yeah, is almost over. I mean, legitimately, we're going to retire the Wasteland episode for the year as soon as camp starts, right? Yes. Uh. This was almost a Wasteland episode. We were like 50-50 on this one. Is this Wasteland? Is this Collegiate Chaos? I don't know. Uh, but I, I let Kyle decide. and He picked Collegiate Chaos. So here we are. <laughs> also, check out Jared's haircut. I. Hmm. That, what, also, check out Jared's haircut. I. Thanks for the contribution, Gangland. Yes, I did get my haircut. You just noticed? That's because you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So let's let's go into here. So uh, pulling some information from Vegas Insiders website here, just some win totals here. So I'm going to going to go over their their projected or projected win totals for the year and give our thoughts to too high, too low. And we'll have a discussion about that. How's that sound, Jared? Sounds amazing. Um, you sound you sound the, thrilled. <laughs> is Vegas Insider the same as the Oracle? Listen, guys, I have I have exciting news for everybody. Um, we just hired a third person onto the Sloopcast. Uh, we aren't going to tell you what his name is. Uh, you're never going to see his face. Um, but he's going to give us all of the amazing inside information. He's literally uh, simultaneously he's 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 the janitor at the WAC, um, and he's bugged the entire building. Um, he has stolen all of the passwords, and we're gonna have all of the inside information ever. And if we're ever wrong anything, it won't be our fault. It will be uh, the secret third person who we hired who definitely is a real person and definitely not just Kyle in a giant curly Q mustache that he glued onto his face in a pair of sunglasses. Sounds great. Yeah, we're, we're finally expanding, Kyle. We're fine. <laughs> we'll never meet him. Because he's not the janitor and he's definitely real. He's definitely a real person. Um, his, his name is definitely not Kyle, uh, and he's definitely not Kyle in a glued on mustache. Let's get into it real quick here, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I'm sure people are imagining, Hmm. Let, let, what, what, what if Kyle grew out the mustache? How, how, how would that look? Not well. Well, I'm, we're not also well. going to have to get you some mustache wax. It doesn't yeah. curl like that on its own. That takes effort. Yeah, and and the answer is not well, Jared. All right, uh, so Vegas Insider projects Ohio State 10 and a half wins for the year. Is so Ohio at, State? At least one loss, maybe two, for Ohio State for the season. I mean, 
just statistically speaking, it's incredibly unlikely that they go undefeated, right? And that's what that's what Vegas is. Vegas is not going to basically put money, put their money on the line saying that Ohio State would go undefeated. It's just not statistically likely. Statistically speaking, they're more likely to drop a game than not. And yeah. this is regular season, right? Yeah, this is yeah, this just says the college football season. So this would be Oh. I, I would I would take this as the regular season because they have Alabama as eleven and a half. Well, how many games does Alabama have on their schedule? If it's like all 12, the other right? teams, it's twelve. Okay. So yeah, they they must I unless, assume? No, unless noted here, because there's some in here that says, hey, James, James Madison uh, is projected six and a half, but they play 11 games. So I'm going to take that okay. as it's 12 games. OK, so so just so we're clear, we are just talking about the 12 game regular season. Correct. More like 11 because FCS. Listen, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you on that. By the way, um, was it Pick Six? Who who tweeted it? Someone tweeted uh, last time a team like the the longest number the the longest time it's been since a team has played in FCS school. Notre Dame and US, I think it was USC, still have never done it. Um, Ohio State hasn't done it since 2013, which apparently puts them in the top five. I really wish I remember who tweeted that so I could give them credit for it. But Ohio State hasn't played a FCS team since 2013. And like I said, that it puts them in like the top five least or longest without playing an FCS school, which just tells you how prominent it is everywhere in college football. I know this, so, this, is, this is not it, but these are teams that are not playing FCF, FCS games this year. Uh, well, and, so there you go. I think that and I that, don't that, see and and I don't see a single SEC team on here. <laughs> this are you linking me to it? Oh, it was, it was Steve Hell, Hellwagon. Yeah, really. OSU playing six top twenty-five teams from Phil Steele. Okay, that's that's not it, but that's that's still nice. Thank you, Gangland. Um, but yeah, but, but there you go with the thing that he tweeted along the lines. Yeah, I, I saw like a specific tweet that like just said it. But I think the thing that Kyle just uh, put down in the Discord chat, which you can see in our um, video, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, Louisville, Houston, Oklahoma, Texas, Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, UTEP, Notre Dame, uh, Colorado, USC, um, is that Southern Georgia? A and is that who that is? And Old Dominion. Um, are the only teams not playing in FCS school? Um, Kyle, Old Dominion isn't an FCS school. <laughs> is this new? Is this, a, is this a new turn? How you think that's Pitt? I don't think that's Pitt. Pitt would, I think Pitt typically has yellow in their logo. Yeah, no, that's, it does look like Pitt's logo, but it's it's slightly different and it doesn't have any yellow in it, so I don't think it is. But yeah, it's a uh, Big Ten yeah, has more teams are, in this than uh, Old Dominion is Division One. As of when? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm not going to, okay. going to you dig don't, further into You don't have it, to look it up, Kyle. <laughs> I, I mean, I, b I believe that the person who put together this graphic got it correct. Uh, I wasn't calling them a liar. I'm just curious when this happened. <laughs> Unless it's an unpaid ESPN intern. Well, it's it's uh, at CFB ranking, I assume, on Twitter. All right, Kyle, Alabama, 11 and a half. We need to stay on... We yep. need to stay they're, on target the, here. They're the only team with 11 and a half this year. It's, oh, actually, so, we didn't say. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't do Ohio State yet. Um, yeah. You said Ohio State 10 and a half. Yes. So now that we know specifically that that is uh, 
just counting the 12 game schedule, I yep. do not expect Ohio State to drop two in the regular seasons in the mm. regular season this year. Nope. I they I did, really don't expect them to year. drop. They did last year, but I don't I don't yeah. think so this year. Um, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again, and I'll say it a few more times. I think Notre Dame is going to be a really good team this year. I think it's very unfortunate for Notre Dame that they have to play Ohio State in week one. Oh, uh, Notre Dame's going to be a very good team come November. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they're going to be that team September 1st. I think they've made too many changes. Good in November, but not September. Exactly, gangland. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I'm very concerned about the Ohio State Notre Dame game next season. Not this upcoming season, but next season. But this season in week one in September, I just don't see it happening. Uh, Michigan's not going to be any good this year. Penn State's going to have a down year this year. Who knows about Michigan State? That's always feels very up in the air. Um, Wisconsin is always a concern, but they play in Ohio State in September. Um, if this was in Madison late October, I'm a little bit more concerned, but it's a September game. Yep. Uh in, a, in Columbus, so I'm much less concerned. I think this is a very, very favorable. Uh, the, the only uh, the game that can and we just literally, we literally did an episode on this not too long ago about what scares us on Ohio State schedule. Yeah, the Penn State out. one is the one that scared. Week. It was not last. I think it was two weeks ago. Um, but regardless, um, the 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 Penn State one is probably the one that concerns me the most simply because it's at Penn State. It's in late October. It's right after the Iowa game. So if that Iowa game gets a little mm-hmm. testy and then you have to go on the road in, you know, seven, six, seven days to to Happy Valley, maybe your legs aren't underneath you. That game kind of worries me a little bit. But I just I don't see two losses on this schedule for Ohio State. I don't see it. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, I, I think ten and a half is too too low. I would, I'd take the over on that one. Uh, Alabama eleven and a half. Now looking at Alabama's schedule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're out really of big out of conference Graham against Texas. Yep, that's they they have that in week two. Um, it is. It says at Texas. Is it actually at Texas? It is. Wow. This is not a neutral site game, Jared. They're actually going to Austin to play this game. No, nah, cha- I don't believe Whoa. you. I don't believe you. Wow. It You're is telling me Bama's game. playing it, hold on, hold on. an out of conference Jared. game it's, in it is someone's even, stadium? Even better, Jared. It's, it's not a night game. It's, it's noon. a noon. It's a noon game on Fox. It's the Gus Johnson special. It is. How about that? That that might be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, that I'm might really be looking, fun. I'm, I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited for. We're gonna social screen that game. Absolutely. I'm calling it right now. Right, so I'm not even putting that, that one up to a vote. If you're not in our Discord server, come join mm-hmm. our Discord server. We'll be watching that game together in the Discord yeah. server. I'm letting then, you know then, right now that's happening. And then Alabama's other out of conference schedule is against Mighty UL Monroe and Austin Prey. Evie? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but it's, they're playing Texas at Texas. Let's not mm-hmm. sure the rest of their game are cupcakes, but. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking at their, that's, like, that's to be expected. Their, their cross conference Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Yeah. That's a good I, I, poll. Yeah, I mean it's I not Georgia. Uh, that eleven and a half is a is a really good number. <laughs> That's a really I'm, good number. I'm, I'm taking the over on that. This looks I like agree. a. a the, very, I mean the Texas very favorable. The Texas A and M game is obviously of concern, but it's in Tuscaloosa. That's um, it. That's it. I'm not afraid of LSU this year. Ole Miss could potentially. Because it's at Ole Miss right after being at mm-hmm. LSU the week before. If you're looking for like a, you know, double road game against good, not great, but good opponents, you keep an eye on that Ole Miss game. Um, so, I mean, it's I think it's plausible 
mm, possible. I'll downgrade that to possible that you see, you know, maybe a loss to Texas A&M and Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going over. Yep, agreed. All right. Um, I'm just going to name some some teams here. Um, if you want to spend some time on them, if not, that's fine. I, I, I pulled some interesting uh, numbers here that wanted to get your quick take or long discussion, however you want. Uh, so the other two teams that were 10 and a half other than Ohio State were Clemson and Georgia. Now, uh, let's pull up. Let's pull up the Georgia schedule. Sure. Um, I don't believe Clemson is back to Clemson yet. Um, so I'm just going to immediately say, of course, they're uh, we're going to have to look at their schedule, too, because okay. so I, I don't think Clemson's going to be all that great this year. But also, I think the ACC as a whole is going to be pretty garbo this year. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know necessarily right. so, where their losses are going to come from. So, so but let's look at Georgia. So they're, uh, they're, they play week one. They play Oregon. Is that a neutral or is that at home? It says versus on the schedule. Um, this set looks like it's a neutral. It's at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So that neutral site. But it's pretty much a home. A game neutral site in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's an SEC. About as far away site. Out, outside of like going to Florida, about as far away from Oregon as you can possibly get. Yeah. N neutral in quotes uh, yeah. and then and then they play uh georgia tech as they always do um as they're yeah. out of conference the other games yeah no, nobody else uh i don't even know samford they're, and they're, uh kent state so oregon yeah oregon's their, their main one and then they're cross so they're cross auburn. teams that they play auburn Mm -hmm. And in Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. Yeah. Um, 10 wins, which means they can lose twice. And yeah. I don't. I take the I over. I don't see it. I take the over on that one. Um, Oregon, maybe. Although I wouldn't put money on it. Um, outside of that, I just don't see a loss on the schedule. Agreed. So over Jared and I over for Georgia Clemson ten and a half. Looking at their schedule, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out who. I mean, I could pick two of them out that were out of conference: Louisiana Tech and Furman. Oh boy! Uh, and then the, then they play South Carolina as they always do at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And they play Notre Dame, which is. I guess they consider that an out of conference schedule. Yeah, I think technically it's yeah, I think technically it is. Um, and then so and, then and, they, 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 and here's the thing. I've been saying it, been saying it all year. I don't like Notre Dame as a September team, but I like them as a November team. Guess when they play Notre Dame? Yep. So November. So two losses. I think they can lose that game. I think they could potentially lose a game against Miami in the second to last week of the season as well. Um, not that, again, I don't think Miami is all that great, but I think they could very easily lose to, they, they go on the road to Florida State, they go on the road to Notre Dame. Um, the, you know, I think they beat South Carolina. I think they beat Georgia Tech. Um yeah, they, they they got a very yeah their, their I, tough their toughest game so their toughest road game is Notre Dame which I, I completely agree I completely agree Jared on on the road in November it would be a completely different Notre Dame team than what we'll see in uh, September but don't don't sleep on probably one of the sleepers in the ACC and I'm not saying it because I'm here in the triangle area Jared and there's Jared laughing <laughs> you always do this you always <laughs> overvalue the wolf pack you got too much they, of that radio you got too much of that local radio in your ear they did it Jared what was their record last year what was their record last year no one outside of North Carolina knows because no one outside of North Carolina cares. And honestly, I, I think they, they can get to 10 wins again. I think they can get to 10 wins this year. 
Cool. Well, they, well, excuse me. They had nine <laughs> wins last year. I think they can get nine, maybe ten wins this year. I, 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 don't, I think they could. Kyle, I don't care if they get nine wins or ten wins. I only care if they can beat Clemson or not. And I, they, they eh. may, they, they, they may, they return, they returned so many of their starters, and it was a, you had a nine-win team from last year, and you're returning pretty much almost all of your starters. It, it, this is this is one of those years that that Maybe. we see in, that we see some teams that they upset higher ranked teams. This is a team to really watch out for. I'll say. I think it all depends upon if Uwe Youngle gets a grasp of the offense this year, and I think it also. De- I mean, they they also replace both of their coordinators. Yeah, this is a this is a huge year for the future of Clemson. Yep. They put po- they positioned themselves as one of the powers in college football. They had a down year last year. Do they recover from that or not? And the fact that they just lost both of their coordinators and they're returning a quarterback who struggled at times. Uh, uh, he's not he's not been to the standard of Clemson quarterbacks. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go under for Clemson. I'll go under. I'll, I'll go under as well. I'll All go right. under as well. All right. Uh, let's see. So Michigan is at nine and a half under. And again, the people just be like, oh, ha ha, because it's Michigan. Fuck Michigan. Ha 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 ha. They. Kyle, please correct me if I'm wrong or someone in our discord server or someone in the YouTube comments. Correct me if I'm wrong. I still don't think they have a full coaching staff. I don't think they have a full coaching staff right now. We're days away from camp. I I don't know that they have a full coaching staff right now. Uh, Gangland says, I don't think they have an OC still. Kyle, can you just Google Michigan 2021 yep. offensive coordinator? All right, here we go. Here we go. So scrolling down scrolling down specialist wide receiver coach running game linebacker tight end coach director of strength quarterback co off co offensive coordinator and matt weiss who is the co offensive coordinator slash quarterback there is no other oh the other co offensive coordinator is sharon moore who who is the so, Donald C. Graham football offensive line coach? Cool. So they have two co offensive coordinators, which is a thing. Um, so they do have a full, this is their full coaching staff, right? Uh, it must be. Yeah, because you're allowed to have 11 coaches. You see 12 on the screen right there, and that's because they included their strength and conditioning coach, who's not technically a football coach. Not not in the, like, you have to have, you can't have, you know what I mean? Like, they're the off-season coach, not the on-season coach, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I guess they just either, I guess they're just rolling with two co-offensive coordinators. <laughs> But yeah, they have they have one co defensive coordinator. I don't see a second. Oh no, it's Jesse Minton, Minter, who's a defense, just straight up defensive coordinator. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Either way, either way. Yeah. I under under Jared. Well, I won't spend too yeah, much time. Yeah, they're well. There. So what what is helping Michigan here is that they're out of conference is Garbo. Complete um, garbage. Colorado State, Hawaii, Connecticut. They're, they're going to go. They're going to go into October undefeated. They also play Maryland, so they're going to go into uh, October undefeated, and they're going to feel good about beating up teams that may have a combined combined wins of under ten for the season. Uh, yeah. Uh, then they play Iowa. At Iowa, they can lose that game. Uh, then they play Indiana at Indiana the week after that. They they win that game. But then Penn State, Michigan State back to back. I think well, they probably they, lose both of those games. They do have a they do have a bye week in between there, but yes. Oh, yeah. My mistake. You are correct. Um so I mean that helps them for Michigan State, but 
Eh, not enough, I don't think. Yeah, that, that, um, middle, that middle there is that's that's tough. That's tough for them. Iowa, Penn State, yeah, Michigan State. Yeah, because I think they I think they have a losing record in October. Yeah. I think they beat Indiana, but I think they lose to Iowa, Penn State, and Michigan State, mm-hmm. um, and then they'll lose to Ohio. Ohio State's gonna. Oh my God! They have woken a sleeping giant. <laughs> they have no idea what's coming for them in, in November. Yeah. They have no idea what's coming for yeah. them. What, what, what about what about their big brother? Their big brother is projected seven and a half wins. Seven and a half. So that's a significantly lower number. Uh-huh. Um, so they're they're out of conference is Western Michigan, uh, Akron, and at here. Washington. I. Th- at Washington's interesting. They have a they had a lot of roster turnover. Uh, they're still doing. I I, I think so too. Gangland. Um, they're doing a lot of roster. Like I said, roster turnover. They're still doing their transfer portal thing. It's good to have Washington as the third game as opposed to the first game. Uh, it's good that they don't have to like with a bunch of new players go all the way to Washington. Mm-hmm. But man, that, um, that, if, that, for, o- for week one, man, the October though, they, in October, that they have Maryland, rough. then three of their four weeks is against Ohio state, Wisconsin and their little brother. Yeah. And I think that they, they, they go 500 in there, but again, like we only need seven wins, right? Um, so that's one, two, three, four. So you need four. So you pretty much think that they need to go undefeated. So, I mean, yeah. they're going to beat Western Michigan. They're going to beat Arkansas. Um, they'll beat Minnesota, maybe, probably. Um, yep. But that Maryland. that's pretty 50-50. Um, it's hard. It's Michigan is such a question mark because of all the turnover and all the transfer portal stuff. It's really it's it, it's hard. Um, I don't have a good grasp on who Michigan State is right now. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it, it's but a tough so, schedule. so if we say they beat Minnesota, we say they beat Maryland, that's four. Uh, we say they beat Michigan, that's five. Illinois, Rutgers, six, seven, eight. So if we count Illinois, Rutgers, Rutgers as a win, that's seven. N- we will Indiana. count Iowa as a win. That's, and then I don't think that they, or excuse me, not Iowa, Indiana. And then we don't. Ca- I'm not going to count Penn State as a win. Um, that's think- eight. But here's the thing: the Minnesota and Rutgers game, and quite frankly, the Michigan game. I'm not. I gave them those wins, and mm-hmm. if they lose two of those games, which they could, then they're under that seven. I think yeah. the seven and a half is a pretty perfect call here. I'm going to lean towards. I. Uh, I'm going to say I'll, over. I'll say I'm going to say over. I'm going to say under. I think they get exactly seven wins in the regular season this year. I'll go. I'll go over. All right. Um, let's see. Other interesting games to talk about, Jared. Penn State. I, I guess we'll we'll we'll, we'll finish we'll finish out the the other um, team in the in the East here. Penn State nine and, or excuse me eight and a half eight and a half. They're out of conference games. Ohio at Auburn and uh, Central Michigan. Yeah, uh, let's see. So, by the way, I think it's in, they they do start the season with Purdue. Yes, it's at Purdue. It's a night game at Purdue. <laughs> that's I, that's I still always... they win that game. So one um, two. I don't really know Auburn that well but if it's anything like how they did last year uh (laughs) i I think i think penn state has a has a good shot at beating auburn i like i like penn state against auburn i I don't even like penn state that much this year but i still like them against auburn i just don't Mm -hmm. i don't like auburn um so so you're pretty much saying going into october they'd be four and oh then i think so i think they're four and oh in october and auburn I think so. Um, but they could be two and two. Like, cause I like them over Purdue and I like them mm-hmm. over Auburn. So but could so they lose those games? I'd I'd feel better if one of those were at home. 
but they're yeah. both on the road. Yep. So if they go four zero in September, they got to find five wins for the rest of the season here. So Northwestern, yeah, win at Mich- at Michigan. Eh. I think they win it, but it you know you can't give it to them. But I do think they win it. Okay, uh, home to Minnesota. Minnesota's tough if for no other reason than it's sandwiched right in between Michigan and Ohio State. Um, it's a, it's a home game. And it's night as well. Uh, is is that yeah. is that their white is that their whiteout? I think that I might be know. their whiteout. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, and then but then I think they roll. But after so they're gonna have a rough October. Uh, but then I think they roll through November. Okay. It's yeah. a tough schedule for Penn State. What was the number again? Eight and a half. I, I think I got to go under. It's yeah. a rough schedule for Penn State. I, I agree. It's a very I, I think, rough schedule. I think eight. I think eight is a eight, seven win season for Penn State here. They, they were, As a reminder, they went seven and six last year. All right. Uh, let's see here. Any other teams? I think you're looking at the same one here, Jared. Any other teams that really interest you here? Um, Illinois, four and a half. Indiana, four and a half. Iowa, seven and a half, as I'm just reading off some Big Ten teams here. Maryland, um, under, Maryland, under, over. Okay. <laughs> Maryland, five and a half. Minis- Let's take a look at Maryland. Okay. Uh, so Maryland here. Pulling up the schedule. Maryland wins six games is is the schedule or is the question here. They play Buffalo, Charlotte and um, SMU. uh, SMU. I think that's three wins. Mm -hmm. And then they finish the season at Michigan. I think that's a loss. Hold on. I'm just looking. I'm looking for six wins, right? We're looking for six wins. Yep. So three wins to start the season. Lost to Michigan. Lost to Michigan State. Lost. I think they can beat Indiana. They could beat Indiana, they, so there's four. Um, home, <laughs> home to Northwestern, may, yes. I'm maybe Northwestern. Home. Yep, that's five. Under. 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 No, yeah. I don't see it. I agree, under. I'd go under with um, five and a half there. Minnesota, seven and a half. Uh, this, Minnesota's a very interesting team to me. Um, there's been a lot of allegations uh there's been been some rough issues during the off season with minnesota uh as far as the conditions of the coaching staff you know, stuff right stuff so they did lose tanner morgan um this okay. this is could be make or break year for the coaching staff in in minnesota mm-hmm. um so, Kyle, I'm sorry. What was the number again? You said seven and a half. And seven, seven and a half. half. And I'm going under. I'm going to go under. All right. So I think they win their first three games. Um, yep. uh, nor, uh, New Mexico is bad. I don't even know who WIU is. Western Illinois. Um, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um I think they beat Colorado. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. They, they have do. a really, really nice offensive line this year, and I think it's going to get them. And by the way, um, they're getting um, – how am I going to blank on his name? They're running back back this year. Um, oh, Ibrahim. Ibrahim, yeah. So, yeah, it, I think they have a really nice offensive line and a really nice running back, and I think against a team like Colorado, that might be enough. And mm-hmm. their defense is fine too. Um, yeah. So I three, don't think they beat Michigan State. Nope, they I don't beat. They think don't beat they Purdue. do beat Purdue. Mm-mm. No, I think. Yeah, Purdue's not. No. Purdue's not any good this year. Okay. Um, I think they do. They beat Illinois. Yep. They probably lose to Penn State, but again, with that Penn State. They could beat Penn State with that game sitting right in between Ohio State and Michigan for them. That's scary. That's potentially scary for them. Um, I, I see. I only see like six wins here, Jared. I see six wins for Minnesota. So I'm going under three, four, five, six. 
I think they can get eight. Mm. I think they can get eight. I don't think mm. they will get eight, but I think they can get eight. Yeah. I think it's a good number. You said seven and a half, right? Yep. I'm going to go under. It's a good number. I think they can get eight. I think eight is probably the highest we can expect from them. All right. Um, but I think we can expect lower. So I'm going to go under here, but I don't think it's I don't think it's an easy call. Yeah. Northwestern. I think is... Penn State has a shittier offense this year. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't like I don't like Penn State this year. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. North, Northwestern. Ohio State is... is going to roll the East this year. Yeah. Northwestern is four and a half. Uh, uh, we, we don't, uh, under, under, <laughs> I'm going to go under just, there. Just, I don't, I, we're not going through that schedule. Uh, just finishing up the, the big 10 teams here, Jared, uh, Purdue seven and a half Rutgers four and a half and Wisconsin eight and a half under over. And what was the last one? Wisconsin eight and a half. Let's look at Wisconsin. All right. Sure. So their out-of-conference games is <laughs> Illinois State. Well, listen, Wash- hold on real quick. Wisconsin, y'all, I really like to stick up for you guys. I think that you're one of the most consistent teams in the Big Ten West. Um, y'all are always scheduling the most embarrassing out-of-conference schedule, like year after year, yeah. year after year. And, and there's like, there three stop games it. are just cakewalk illinois state washington state and new mexico state washington state is maybe the worst yeah no it's 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 kansas but (laughs) washington state is one of the worst power five programs in the power five like it it's yes it's uh, kansas is probably worse but man uh, so I, Washington State might as well be a, a, a Mountain West school, in my opinion. They, I don't they, care. They do play. They do their their cross conference games, though, is at Ohio State, at at Michigan State. That's a tough draw. That's a tough That's draw. That's a tough for draw. Because, uh, again, like I am so I so don't know what to expect from Michigan State this year. That could be the best two teams in the Big Ten East. It could mm-hmm. be. And then, and they I think also, Penn State will be better, but I don't know. And then Wisconsin finishes the year at Iowa, at Nebraska, and home to Minnesota. That's that's going to be tough. They don't be surprised. You see Wisconsin going into yeah, going into um, yeah. That, that's I I can see four losses here for for Wisconsin. So that eight and a half is again a really good number. Vegas Vegas knows what they're doing. <laughs> I, don't, I I think it's I think it's a pretty easy over actually, because again these are the easy wins. The, this is me saying these are games I fully expect Wisconsin to win. So again, these are the games I 100% expect them to win. Three cupcakes off the top: Illinois, Northwestern. That's five. Mm-hmm. Purdue. That's six. Maryland. That's seven. Nebraska. That's eight. I think I got them to eight very easily and that's so to get to nine they just need to beat any one of ohio state michigan state iowa minnesota i think that's i think that is an easy over i think that's an easy over i I think i would go over but i wouldn't say it's easy though i I think i think they only have to beat one of those teams kyle those teams I just mentioned, they only have to beat one of them. Yeah. All right. Uh, so some other team no, teams of note here. Notre Dame at nine and a half wins. Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Let's take a look at Notre so, Dame. So here, here's our schedule. Just say, just say win or loss here, Jared, because we are at 40 minutes into the episode right now. So just say win or loss here, okay? At Ohio State. Loss. Marshall. With all due respect. Yep, Marshall. Win. Cal. Win. At UNC. Win. BYU. That, that, by the way, I, I, UNC I think is fine this year. Um, 
they but they're just fine and again like with this being the fourth game Notre Dame's going to start getting their feet underneath them so yep. I think that's a win over the Tar okay. Heels BYU that's a win Stanford that's a win UNLV win at Syracuse win home to Clemson night game I think they win this game Yep. I think at this point we're talking about I agree. I I'm, I agree. I'm very bullish on the long-term Notre Dame this year. I'm very bullish on them. Mm-hmm. I'm not very bullish on long-term Clemson. Um I Clemson has more talent on that team, but I like the Notre Dame coaching staff a lot more. Um yeah. All right. And the, um, and the and the talent on the Notre Dame team isn't bad by any means. I just think Clemson has better talent right now, but um I think DJ can clutch that one out. I don't know, man. I'm just right. not very bullish on Clemson and, right now with all their coaching staff changes yeah. and Nui Ungalale not playing well. Agreed. Um, I mean, the finish of the not. season at Navy when when BC or BC when that's ten right there, and then they finish the season at USC. Uh, man, that, those are that, those are two teams that we don't know a lot about playing at the end of the season, <laughs> so we can just fifty fifty that one. But so that's that's ten wins right there, right? right and Cle- then you, if we call Clemson and USC both fifty fifties and just give them one of the games, yeah. So yeah, I'd go I'd go over nine and a half wins for Notre Dame. Yeah, I'd go over. But it's but it's tight. Because yeah. they could lose both Clemson and USC. They could lose both of those games. They could also win both of those games, by the way. Mm-hmm. But they could also lose both of those games. All right, let's see. Other games here of note. Uh, well, speaking of USC, they have USC nine and a half wins for this year. USC and nine out, and a half. Out, they're out of conference is Rice, Fresno State, and Notre Dame. And All right. Looking at um, and then looking at their their in conference Stanford, Oregon State, Arizona State, Washington State, at Utah is a tough one, at Arizona, Cal, Colorado, at UCLA. Yeah, nine and a half. Kyle, are they undefeated going into the Notre Dame game? I think so. I mean, at I, Utah, I, I don't. I think they well, just drop a game they shouldn't. I think I, well. Either they drop a game they shouldn't, or they do lose the one at Utah. I, 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 this is... Riley was very good at the regular season at Oklahoma. Some coaches are very good at the regular season. Some coaches are really good at dropping a game they shouldn't drop. I think Riley... Um, well, when you don't have a defense... Yeah, um, but no one had a defense in the Big 12, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, I think that it is, I think at worst, I think at worst, Kyle, they finish with three losses, putting them at, what is that, nine and three, right? Mm-hmm. And you said it was 10 and a half for USC? Nine, or nine? nine and a half. Uh, that's an over. Yeah, I, I, I feel like at I feel like at worst they're nine and three at the end of the year. Eight and four is a possibility. Okay, so eight and four would have them losing to Utah, Notre Dame, um, mm-hmm. probably UCLA, and then like a stupid drop game against uh, Stanford or a Cal or an Arizona, like just a, a mm-hmm. game they shouldn't drop but do. Yeah, um, I'd go over, but over, over, over. If they win the games they're supposed to win, they'll they'll go over. Yep. All right. Uh, Texas at eight and a half. I'll just say under. I don't feel like going through Texas's schedule. <laughs> um, I think those are the main ones here. Oh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati at okay. nine and a half. Fuck it. Let's look at Cincinnati. 
<laughs> All right. At well, Arkansas. We, we, let's, let's book it. We started with an Ohio team. Let's end with an Ohio team. All right. well, and well, then we'll, we'll, be, we'll be out the door. At Arkansas, right off the bat. Oh, okay. We're starting the game against a, against an SEC team. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Um, man, they lost a lot of talent, though. That's the problem. <laughs> and it is at they Arkansas, lose that, they, they lose that game, right? They do. Lose their they quarterback, do. lose all their good defensive backs. Week one? Yeah. That, that's a loss. That's a I'm loss so, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I... With all love and respect, Bearcats, you you drop that game. Mm -hmm. And then they finish uh, September playing Kennesaw State. Finish September. That's their. Well, they they finish. They finish September playing Kennesaw State, Miami of Ohio and Indiana. I didn't hear your ellipsis. So Um, three and one, three and one going into October. I, I'm not willing to give them the Indiana game. I mean, like, they could. I feel like that's very 50-50, right? I don't um, like Indiana this year. I don't nah, it's probably better Jared. than 50. It's, uh, it's probably better than 50-50. It's probably better than 50-50 for Cincinnati. But... Yeah, no. Uh, it's, I do not like Indiana this year. That, that's, that's a loss for yeah. Indiana to me. I just... It's... It's just really hard. I, I don't know who Cincinnati is this year. They lost yeah. Ritter. They lost their, all their good defensive backs. I don't know who they are now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it's Cincinnati. With all due respect, Cincinnati does not recruit like... You know, when Ohio State loses C.J. Stroud at the end of the year, they're going to put in another five-star quarterback to replace him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cincinnati, you get a great quarterback... Because you got you found a diamond in the rough and he developed well, you don't you don't replace a great quarterback with a great quarterback at Cincinnati. Not very often. Every once in a while, sure, but not very right. often. It it's so then the they finish the season. So we'll, we'll they, say three and one. We'll say three and one at the end of September. Okay, at Tulsa, uh, they should win U- that. USF, they should win that. They one. should win that. At SMU. I think they win that one. Yep. At UCF. That's that's a tough game. That feels 50-50. Uh, Navy. They'll win that. Home to ECU. They'll win and, that. And they finish at Temple. And, and they should win that one. And home to Tulane. And they'll win that one. Mm-hmm. So, so, so two and a half losses, two, yeah, two and a half losses is what Vegas is projecting here. Arkansas and even if you just say UCF at, at, UC, at um, UCF there, there's, there's a third loss somewhere. So I, I, I may go over, I may go over with this one. Yeah, uh, there's again so much turnover. I think they can't. I think that's first. I want to say that's a perfect line. I think that's a perfect line by Vegas. That's that's a perfect line. Um, yep. I'm gonna go under. I think they lose to Arkansas. They probably you lose to UCF or Indiana. So I'm gonna take those two games. I'm gonna say they lose one of those games. And then again, just with it being an inexperienced team, they probably just drop a stupid game that they shouldn't drop. And that's yeah. your third game. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. Um, I think, I think that should be it, Jared. I think that's it here. All right. Anything, um, else, anything else you want to add on or? Uh, well, I was going to ask you that because this is your opportunity to do the Kyle's corner. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, Kyle's Corner. Um, you want to share some news from our former compatriots? I was going to say about the um, some notes about New Jersey numbers. Oh, OK. You can do that. So just some notes of uh, some freshman Jersey numbers, as well as some returning Buckeyes changing their numbers as well, too. Hey. OK. Uh, so Caleb Brown, wide receiver, is going to be wearing 13. 
Uh, Kojo Antwi is, is number 14. Sony Styles is 20. Um, looking down, looking down here. Um, Kanyu is 93. Kenyatta Jackson is 97. Um, who am I missing here, Jared? Um, Carlos Hensman is 75. Um, Avery Henry, 72. Um, Tegra Chibola is now 67. Um, Omari Abor is rolling with a 23. Um, I, I think the innocent Tate rumor, I don't know an innocent Tate rumor. Uh, I think the biggest note to, to probably note here is that Dallas Hayden was given a number five, which is yes. probably a real solid indicator for how they feel about Dallas Hayden right now. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That uh, they're both flipping to Miami. I, I don't see it. I, I don't some, where 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 then, did you get this rumor from? Yeah, and then some Buckeyes just just because they took a just because they took an official visit. I don't care. Yeah. So Denzel Burke, go go chill go chill at Miami for the weekend. So Someone Denzel, on Discord. Oh, Denzel Burke, good Jared, God! Changing from twenty nine really? to five. And um, Jordan Hancock going from thirteen to seven. That's Cameron Martinez big. ten to thirteen, and. J.K. Johnson going 32 to four. You think it's uh, you think it's more because it's free. Are you talking about Hayden getting the number five number? But they could have given it. Oh, the free OV. Yeah, I go go chill in Miami for a weekend. If someone offered if you're you're a 17 year old and someone saw, said, hey, here's a free trip to Miami for the weekend. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Yep. In a y'all y'all freak out about shit too much. And in, in a in a great new Ennis hairs. lives in South Florida. Yeah, but they're gonna go to the campus, get shown around the campus by the other players, taken to some parties, they're gonna get them drunk, uh maybe more than get them drunk. Um whatever. They're gonna go party. They're high schoolers and they're gonna go get to party, all expenses paid. At a major university for a weekend. Rad. Let's roll. And a great and a great new haircut for for our kicker. Uh, no struggle ruggle with the mullet. Listen, <laughs> you Ewers took his bag, took his ball, and went home. So, like, you know, you we, we had to fulfill the mullet quota quota on the team. Absolutely. We're here for it. All right. That's it, Jared. That's it for me today. By the way, uh, Jordan Hancock rolling with that seven. That's a that's yeah. a number at Ohio State. That is a number at Ohio State. Hancock at four. Uh, n no, Hancock at seven. Yeah. J.K. JK Johnson's, Johnson's at four. four. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hancock got the seven. And again, I think that's a... I think that's a message. That is. I, I think that that seven, I think, is a. That that that's a number at Ohio State. That's that's probably the most prestigious number at Ohio State. I hope he <laughs> better last year or, or seven. Yeah, well, the seven seven thing that that just had to happen for reasons other than the number being prestigious. I mean, his name was seven for Christ's sakes. Mm. Yeah, like I thought right, Jared, they were going to retire I, it because I, of that. I think that's it, Jared. We are coming up on the hour mark, Jared. So let's let's go ahead and end the episode here. All right. Um, hey, do we have any music requests down the bottom? I forgot to line up a band. Um, hey, Kyle, why don't you go ahead and tell everyone uh, about? Well, I'm going to do this. Tell everyone about the news from our uh, old buddies. Oh yeah, our our good friends are moving on, moving on over to a new site. So if you if you like um, some good, I'm trying to find this information. I apologize, me stuttering here. So if you if you miss all the great um, messages and um, updates from 
from Mark and Tony, Tom, Gleitman and Ross. Well, I've got good news for you. They are they are over at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Uh, you can you can check them check their uh, forum right now. Just nothing nothing special to it right now, but at least they they got a they got a good forum up right now where you can chat to them. Uh, I saw that Gleitman has um, some recruiting news up there already. Great. Uh, great stuff from him as always and always good being able to communicate with 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 the gang there again again that's uh buckeyehuddle.com hey hey burke i will ban you if you mention either of those things in our discord ever again (laughs) (laughs) hey hey gangland you're a mod can you can you clean that out for me thanks All right. Uh, is are you good, Kyle? Did you That's say it. everything you wanted to say? That's it. All right. Uh, clean five. There you go. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you um, by. I was so busy listening to Kyle that I forgot to actually do what I was supposed to be doing. We're going to low pan. They're a metal band out of the Columbus area. Um, try plus. Try plus. Uh, Low Pan uh, is the name of the band. Again, metal band out of the Columbus area. I love the lead singer's voice. You know, sometimes sometimes metal singers don't always have the best singers. I promise you that is not the case here. So uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and then roll with that. So with all of give you more permissions, I you should have the permissions, I think. Uh <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, tonight's ending music, low pan ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to ask everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is low pan. That's L O dash P A N. <laughs>